Okay, I'm with uh, Rob England, who has um, uh, developed a, a fairly significant profile within the service management industry um, as the IT sceptic. Um, Rob presented a keynote um, address today uh, entitled Tipu, a new approach to continual service improvement. Um, now, Rob, you um, expressed uh, uh, some concern about uh, the role that continual service improvement I is currently played in, in service management projects, um, specifically ITIL, um, you know, doesn't seem to uh, it, it applies it as the fifth, the end, the end of the life cycle, uh, basically. Um, now, your Tipu project seems to, to uh, infer that it's 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 critical in all stages and and should be should be broken down. Um, so what what are some of the issues with the way people approach uh, continual service improvement uh, at the moment, in your opinion? Well, I think that ISIL inherently in the book tries to make the point that service improvement is a uh, is a function that you put in place and happens all the time you know it's a circle around the Eiffel diagram but not everybody interprets that way and so I think it's not so much a flaw in Eiffel the books as it is a flaw in the way people think about service improvement where CSI kind of gets left oh it is the fifth book and so we'll get around to that after we've done our improvement then we'll put a CSI program in place to try and protect and retain all the great work we're doing now they don't treat CSI as something that you do from day one as the fundamental approach to how you do all your improvement over time in your service improvement. Yeah, yeah, you, you use the terminology um, that there needs to be more granularity in, in the way uh, continual improvement is approached. Um, can you just elaborate a little bit on that, um, you know, what, what you actually mean by granularity and how that, that differs from the way people are approaching, approaching service improvement at the moment? Yeah, well I think there's, there's a number of ways in which we're doing service management improvement wrong. You know, so I really do challenge a bunch of fundamental assumptions. One of them is that CSI comes at the end. Another assumption is that we work process by process, as ITIL would put it. So I prefer to say practice by practice, I don't like the word process, but there's this approach that, oh, we'll work on incident management first, shall we, and then we'll think about problem later, you know, and, and approaching the improvement program where the units of work in the improvement are each of the ITIL processes or practices. And I think that's the wrong unit of work. It's too big, too chunky. You don't try and do all of incident. You just work on much smaller, more granular pieces of incident management, the ones that you need to address right now to achieve the goals, the business goals that you're trying to deliver ultimately in your improvement program. You also mentioned that um, you know any any improvements um, or or any you know small uh, practices rather than processes that you're you're talking about need to come back to the fundamental you know origin of um, need problem and risk. Um, you're not seeing that in 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 uh, service management projects at the moment, and 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 where are they making what what mistake are they actually making in not addressing the 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 need problem risk imperative? Well, it's easy to generalise, right? So there are projects that that are well designed and do start from a business need problem or risk and, and then derive through to what they're going to do in IT. Some are doing it, but there is a trend, um, I think all viewers will agree, there's, there's a trend to um, sometimes uh, forget or lose sight of the fact that we are trying to deliver business value in the end and we start doing idle for its own sake. So we start saying, oh, we really suck at problem management, we need to work on problem management, without thinking about, well, hang on a minute, what are the business goals that we're supposed to be achieving as an IT department? What value are we supposed to be delivering to the business? And, and does problem management actually matter in that context? It might be crappy, but it can stay crappy if it's not related to the, to the business outcomes we, we're supposed to be delivering. Which leads me to my next question. You, you, um said that there was a lot of challenges in, in projects, um, you know, excessive technical fastidiousness is a term that you used uh, as, as being an impediment to actually, you know, achieving project success. Um, and you also then later referred to the fact that we should be going for copper, not gold. Can you just elaborate a little bit on what you consider to be excessive technical fastidiousness and the, the copper, not gold approach? Yeah. So. In IT, when you're dealing with software, there's real benefit in being fastidious and being really 
careful and accurate and complete in everything you do because if you don't, software will screw up. But when you're dealing with people and process, um, we've got to be a bit more relaxed. We've got to let go a bit and understand that we're operating in constrained environments these days. We're operating much shorter of resource. We have to be very pragmatic about the things we do within improving our IT operations. And so therefore we need to accept that we have to let go of perfection. We have to deal with um, incomplete information in an imperfect world. And we have to accept that, uh, that you know, we're going to do the 80-20 thing or as I say, copper not gold. So copper and gold have very much the same um, properties. And except that gold's a bit more resistant to corrosion, but you work it the same way, you can use it for the same things, it has the same electrical properties, and it's a lot, and copper's a lot cheaper than gold. So, you know, we don't always need to go for the gold solution. We only do that when it's really strategic to do so. And in general, we can go for the copper solution. We can go for good enough is near enough. So I'm a big proponent of a very pragmatic approach when we're talking about people and process. You know, I understand we need to be fastidious about software, but there's this ETF, this excessive technical fastidiousness, where people can't be more relaxed, can't let go a bit when they're dealing with process. Okay, and just just harping back to what you said before about um, you know change at a human pace. Um, uh, a, a quote from your presentation was along the lines of um, paraphrasing here: get realistic and pra pragmatic about what is achievable. Um, and and just yeah, if you could just elaborate a little bit more on the the, the concept of of change at human pace um, rather than uh, that rather than at uh, you know the technology implementation or rollout pace. Exactly right. So I think too often in IT we try and change people and process at the same rates that we can change software. And when we're improving process, when we're changing culture, we're changing the attitudes and behaviours of people. So you can change software in hours, days, weeks, depending on your approach, but you can't change people at that sort of pace. They need to change at a human pace. So when we're doing service management improvement, we have to accept that humans take months or years to change their attitudes and their behaviours, their culture. 